Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Chef Marie. Today I'll be doing my April wrap up. Before I get started, if you are new to this channel, please don't hesitate to subscribe down below as well as hit the notification bell. But April was probably my best month so far. I somehow read a total of 20 books. I know, shocking. And out of those 20 books, I read a total of 7,083 pages. And from those 20 books, I gave two books, two stars, two books, two and a half stars, two books, three stars, four books, three and a half stars, eight books that I gave four stars, one book that I gave four and a half stars, and then one five star read. So I can safely say that half of the books I read are four stars and up, but majority of them were three stars and up, which is very good so i definitely had a really good quality as well as quantity for this month and before i get started with all the books that i read this past month i do want to preface this by saying that for the magical readathon that happened throughout the entire month of april i did read majority of these books for that readathon so i'm not going to spend a ton of time rehashing it because i did talk about each of these books pretty much in length in that vlog which at this point should be up already so i'll link that above and down below in case you want to check that out but i read a ton of books like way more than i expected way more than i thought i was going to because of my curriculum and my calling and somehow like before i knew it like i read a shit ton of books for april so the ones i will be going more in detail for this wrap-up will be the books that i read outside of the readathon essentially so the first book i want to discuss is verona comics by jennifer dugan this book i gave two and a half stars this book basically follows a girl called Julie who pretty much has her entire life together where she is practicing for the biggest audition of her life to attend Juilliard while also working at her stepmom's comic shop. It also follows Ridley who does not have his life together and he is his dad's biggest disappointment and his dad his parents run one of the largest chain comic shops in the country. The two of them end up encountering each other at a comic con prom and they inevitably fall in love. But the thing is at first Ridley hides who he truly is and because of his dad and trying to win his dad's favor he decides to infiltrate Jubilee's stepmom's comic shop to kind of learn about the secrets as well as Jubilee herself. However shortly after that his anxiety starts to get worse and things kind of spiral away. So originally I thought this was going to be a really cute meet cute situation like a very typical white romance. This was not it. It started off like that with a dash of like Romeo and Juliet vibes just because of the fact that their parents hated each other. I mean that was literally why Ridley's dad wanted Ridley to infiltrate the comic shop so he can find out more more about the store and see if he can perhaps buy them off but the thing is the book did start to get very serious and very dark very quickly and it started to deal with heavy topics such as depression anxiety and even suicide and the thing is for me i am not like first of all like i don't really like to read a lot of hard-hitting books just to start and when i do read them i kind of need to know ahead of time that this book is going to be very serious and this book is going to be very like hard hitting like all that stuff i need to know this beforehand it's not a trigger warning per se but i just find myself enjoying the book less because i was caught unaware so overall what i was expecting was not what i actually got and thus why i gave this book two and a half stars then the next series i want to discuss is the girls of paper and fire series this book i gave four stars i gave the second book three and a half stars and then i gave the last and final book to the trilogy four stars Overall, I gave the whole series four stars. This book follows a girl called Lei who is part of the paper cast, which basically means that she is fully human and identifies as human in a society where having sort of demon powers and demon looks was actually better. One day she ends up getting snatched and is taken to the king because of her golden eyes to serve as a paper girl, which are basically human concubines to serve the demon king. So now she, as well as eight other paper girls, are forced to learn all these different skills to serve the king better as well as navigate the treacherous palace and courts and to her surprise she ends up being embroiled in a plot that will overthrow everything that she ever knew as well as the fact that she somehow fell in love this is actually a really enjoyable series i didn't like the second book as much but overall i really enjoyed it i loved how complex the characters were and just how like many layers they had especially as you see them grow and change from the beginning of the series 
series to the end of the series because so much has happened and they also really start to realize like what is gray and what is actually right and what is wrong and what is kind of just confusing and in the middle but i did talk about a lot more in my asian book recommendations video so i'll link that above and down below in case you want to check that out then the next book that i picked up is soka's journey by heather morris this book i gave three stars so this book is based on a true story where a jewish girl somehow manages to survive auschwitz but then it's somehow locked away in a siberian prison due to the fact that she somehow helped aka slept with some nazi soldiers as a mean to survive this was actually a really hard book to get into it took me a while to kind of get into the rhythm of the book and this was an even harder book to actually read and digest just because of all the hardships that she faced i mean it was astonishing to see everything that she faced from such a young age and the fact that surviving Auschwitz wasn't enough. She had to be locked away into a Siberian prism which is like one of the coldest places and for something that she really had no control over if she wanted to survive. And what I liked most about Soko was the fact that she was so incredibly smart and bright despite everything that she was going through as well as her will to survive. This was definitely a very hopeful book but the reason why I gave this book three stars is because it was just really hard to get into and it took me quite some time to start to really follow what the heck is going on. Not to mention I feel like I wasn't in the right mindset for a very hard historical novel that is just very dark and intense. So I feel like the three stars is purely because of a personal preference. I think in terms of the writing, in terms of the story itself, it's definitely much higher than that. I just felt like I personally less I just enjoyed it a lot less than I expected. The next book I picked up is Survive the Night by Riley Sager. This book I gave four stars. So moving forward, a lot of the books now are ones that I read for the Magical Readathon, and this was one of them. But basically this book follows a girl who is still reeling over the loss of her roommate slash best friend's death, and she decides to go back home, and she ends up taking a ride with a stranger, and along that road trip back home, she starts to wonder if perhaps the person who killed off her best friend slash roommate as well as various other campus girls is in fact the person driving her back home and so the story just kind of follows that plot and it is very riveting i really enjoyed it it definitely was not the best out of all the riley sager's books i read before but it was still a really enjoyable read then the next book i picked up is the bromance book club which i gave four stars this was so cute this basically follows a guy he is just trying to patch his marriage up with his wife after his marriage somehow lets him find out that she has been faking it this entire time and the way how he reacted after that was just not good he gave her the cold shoulder basically did everything he should not have done and so the two of them their marriage is now in shambles and he is desperate to find out how to fix it and so he finds out that his friends are somehow part of this romance club where they read romance books to kind of get insight on how the woman's thoughts work and this was really cute i don't think this was as cute as i had expected just because of all the hype that surrounded it when it first came out but i still really enjoyed it i just had i don't know i had like higher expectations i guess like i wanted the book to make me feel like happy and like you know excited and i feel like that wasn't really the case like it was cute and that was kind of it not only that there was not a lot of smut scenes in it which i was also expecting for some reason so that was kind of a letdown there the next book that i picked up is friends of volume two which i gave four stars this was super cute really enjoyed it it basically just continues on with the story and the fencing competition and everything and honestly like this is such a fun read i really enjoy the artwork it is so pretty and i love the banter between the two main characters it's just so entertaining to read it's also very unsatisfying because i feel like it goes by so fast like i read this volume in like 10 minutes tops like i'm i feel like it's even stretching it like i feel like i read it in like five minutes to be honest and then it was over so that is like the biggest downside but um i just wish it lasted a little longer you know but overall i really enjoyed it and definitely cannot wait to continue on with the series then this next book i picked up is the lost village which i gave two stars this is another book that i read for the magical readathon so this book basically follows a village that completely disappeared many many years ago and i want to say it was 
set somewhere in Europe, maybe Scandinavia somewhere, I'm not entirely sure, but it follows a main girl where she grew up hearing the story from her grandmother who knew firsthand about this experience. And so she is now a documentary filmmaker and she decides to go to this village to kind of film a documentary and find out like what truly happened, see if there's any clues, etc. And so she and her crew goes there and they start to realize that weird things are happening, equipments are going missing, people are going missing, and you know, things are just going wrong. I, I don't know, like I thought this book would be so much more intense than it actually was. It was supposed to be a horror book, but I didn't really get any horror vibes from it. I got it from, I got more horror vibes from the synopsis than I did from the book itself. And I feel like that says a lot about the book. So, Unfortunately, it was just not the greatest read. Then this next book I picked up is Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McGonaghy. This book I also gave two stars. This is yet another book that I read for the Magical Readathon vlog. But this book basically follows a woman who's trying to reintroduce wolves back into the Scottish forest. And something happens where a man ends up being murdered. And now she's trying to prove to everyone that it was not in fact her wolves who did this. They are not aggressive in that sense unless they are provoked. And so she's trying to prove to everyone that it was in fact someone else who had murdered this man and that's kind of what this book is about it also has some flashbacks about how she even came to this area um, flashbacks about her sister their childhood etc i i don't know like i feel like this book was i had heard so much about this book like so much hype and i read this for my book club and i can safely say that none of us really enjoyed it i think well let me rephrase one person enjoyed it the rest of us did not care much for this book at all. We thought the ending was, it kind of came out of the blue. How did this guy die, etc. Like the culprit. We thought that was very much a letdown. Not to mention I had listened to this on audiobook and I felt like the back and forth with the flashbacks was not really clear. So I was just confused for most of the book. So unfortunately it was just not the greatest experience either. Alright, then this next book that I picked up is Vicious, which I gave three and a half stars. Then I also read Vengeful, which I gave four stars. Stars. So I actually did an entire reading vlog on this, so I'll link this above and down below in case you can check that out. But this is like I went into it thinking it was a Finnish duology. That was what was said for many years, I feel like. And uh no, there's actually another book. I don't know when that's coming out. It's called Victorious. But I am very intrigued now because I enjoyed this series so much more than I expected. It basically follows two guys one is victor one's eli where they met during college and they decide to have some sort of experiment about extraordinary people and originally it was more hypothesis but then it became experimental and things kind of went you know wrong it's all about morally great characters there is so much like x-men vibes from the series i really enjoyed it like i enjoyed it so much more than i expected i don't know why i think okay so the first part the beginning was definitely very slow i wasn't even sure i was gonna like it but then once things started to pick up more characters were introduced more situations were happening i got a lot more invested with the story so at the end of the day, I really enjoy the series and definitely cannot wait for the next book and hopefully that is the last book. The next book I picked up is As Good As Dead which I gave 5 stars. I also read this for the Magical Readathon vlog so again I'll link that above and down below if you want to check that out but this book, this series have been such a good time for me. Um, I listened to an audiobook and it basically just concludes the whole story about Pip and her podcast and her trying to solve mysteries. This one really focuses on a mystery about herself where she is actually the target of a serial killer. Uh, so as the story first starts off, she starts to realize that she's been getting these emails and tweets that have been a little bit alarming, but she didn't really think too much about it in the beginning until she started to get things in person. She started to receive these dead pigeons, um, these chalk figures were showing up on her driveway, etc. And then she starts to investigate and see there's a sort of pattern. Before long, she realizes that she might in fact be the next target on this killer. And so the story is just very fast paced, very action packed. I would say that the first half was one story and then the second half was a completely different story that both were very gripping but they were both very different if you have read this book you know exactly what i'm talking about when that middle part just completely shifts and it becomes just you know like 
a lot more gripping it's just a really good book guys the whole series has been phenomenal i highly recommend it i especially recommend it on audiobook just because there's a full cast so you really get all the characters like coming to life so at the end of the day this was such a good read and i loved it so highly recommend this one all right then this next book that i picked up is instructions for dancing which i gave three and a half stars this is another book that i read for the magical readathon but this book basically follows a girl whose romance her idea on romance has completely shattered because her father ends up leaving her mother and is now getting married to someone else and actually cheated on her mother so now her idea of just romance her love for romance novels is just completely gone she no longer believes in it one day she is actually getting rid of her romance books and she ends up encountering someone where suddenly now she's able to see a couple's entire journey the beginning the middle and the end and she finds out that they always somehow break up no matter what it is inevitable so she doesn't believe in romance anymore she believes that this image this vision that she's getting is just proving her point on the other hand though she herself is actually somehow falling in love so this book was actually interesting i did think that the main character was very hypocritical in terms of what she was preaching versus what she was doing it didn't really align not to mention i hated the narrator's voice that is an audiobook and the narrator for this i don't know like all the books that she has narrated i absolutely despise i don't know what it is with her voice something with her accent or the way how she emphasizes things like it's just aggravating to me and i just can't it just i just can't stand her voice and i did not realize this until like halfway through and i'm like why is this narrator like pissing me off so much and then i realized that you know this is the same narrator who has done narrations for other books that i hated so <laughs> that's probably why but that being said though i did find the plot of this to be quite enjoyable and this is actually one of my better like nicola yoon's books i feel like i've read her books in the past and they've always just been like okay this one i actually enjoyed so i was very happy about that then this next book i picked up is skin of the sea which i gave two and a half stars this is another book that i read from magical readathon vlog like i said earlier i read a ton for that readathon so I will be linking that video so you guys can check out all my thoughts throughout the month but this book basically follows a girl who has turned into a mommy wada which is a mermaid um, about three four months after she had passed away as a human and now she is basically in the waters collecting souls from people who have passed away at sea for her goddess one day she ends up saving someone which she should not have due to some sort of decree upon her mommy waters and now she is forced to go on an adventure or a journey with the boy that she saved but along the way she starts to realize that this guy is having some secrets and things are not as they seem with the whole immortal beings um this book was such a disappointment i felt like like the story did not live up to the cover so that's i don't know i was so disappointed i felt like the book itself was very easy to read so that was good but the i don't know like the way how things were described the characters themselves like everything was just like very mediocre and subpar to be quite honest so overall i just didn't really enjoy this book i really wanted to because it sounded so freaking cool but i just don't think this is the book for me then this next book i picked up is fix her up which i gave three and a half stars again this is a book that i read from my magical readathon vlog so you know but this book basically follows a girl called georgie who is the littlest the youngest sibling of her entire family and she is not treated very seriously just because of the fact that she was a lot younger than her siblings and her family has already gotten like some sort of they've gotten used to their way of life until she kind of popped out and um things changed so she's always been trying to convince everyone that she is to be taken seriously and she also wants to be a clown like that's her profession she's a clown for children so that does not help her um you know goal in trying to appear more adult like and mature then we follow travis who was a major baseball player who also happens to be georgie's brother's best friend so georgie grew up with travis the entire lives they've known each other and georgie has been in love with him his ent her entire life so now that he's back in town she's trying to somehow due to circumstances they decide to date because that way she can be taken more seriously on other hand he can be taken more as a family man so things obviously go from there it definitely follows a fake dating trope and even though this book was cute it was not what i expected i had heard so much stuff about this book and i don't know i just felt like my expectations 
exceeded it like i don't know like i feel like at this point my favorite romance is actually love hypothesis and that was a book where the hype definitely met my expectations and since then all the other romance books i've read that has not been the case and unfortunately this is one of them i still enjoyed it it just wasn't as amazing as i thought it was going to be then the next book that i picked up is ray bearer by jordan ifueco this book i gave four and a half stars this was so freaking good so this is another book that i read for my magical readathon and this book basically follows a girl called tari sai who grew up kind of secluded she lives in a magical house or something like that where she has all of these attendants attending her her studies etc and she doesn't really see her mother aka the lady very often and one day she finds out that she was actually born between her mother and an ifu or ifa i don't know how you pronounce it but some sort of like genie like being someone who is able to grant wishes and so the purpose of her being born is so that the lady can force her daughter aka tarisai to fulfill her last wish which is to kill the crown prince and so tarisai ends up going to the children's palace one day where she is trying to vie to become the crown prince's council which are individuals who are somehow connected to the crown prince through telepathic means as well as allowing the crown prince to become immune and so now she goes there and she ends up falling in love with the crown prince and because she realizes that her mother the lady wants him dead you know things kind of go from there and this book was so freaking good i really enjoyed it i enjoyed it way more than i expected this was like a breath of fresh air after i read skin to the sea because since he was like i said not the greatest book but this book was like freaking phenomenal i don't quite think this book has yet reached five stars for me but i did get the second book and i'm excited to start that one asap because I feel like the way how this book ended, I kind of even know how things will conclude eventually. Then this next book I picked up is Dark Matter, which I gave four stars. This is another book that I read for my magical readathon, and it follows a man called Jason, who is one day, he's going back home, he is a college professor, and he's somehow kidnapped. And next thing he knows, he finds himself in some sort of laboratory room where he does not recognize anyone around him, and he finds out that his entire life is now different his house is no longer his house his wife is no longer his wife and he's desperate to go back to his family so as the story progresses you find out you know you follow him as he tries to find his way back to his wife and his son and just all the adventures and journey that he goes through i just found like the story itself to be super interesting because of the whole multiverse and him trying to you know go to different worlds to find his original wife and son back and in a way it was very powerful because of his like love and devotion to them on the other hand i was like things are just going crazy right now especially towards the end like if you read this book you know what i'm talking about the ending was getting wilder and wilder like it was getting a little out of hand um but yeah overall i really enjoyed it then this next book i picked up is never have i ever which i gave three stars this is another book that i read for a magical readathon i wasn't kidding guys when i said i read a lot so this book basically follows a woman who is living life normally until one one day this woman shows up at her book club and it kind of shifts things around with this whole game of never have i ever and the main character soon realizes that this mysterious woman might know secrets from her past this book was okay i actually thought about dnfing it which is why i gave it only three stars because the beginning was kind of boring like i felt like it took a long time for the story to really happen and for things to try to pick up but once it actually did it became a lot more interesting i became a lot more invested with the story with the characters and just finding out like what exactly did this woman hide and what exactly is this woman trying to do and what exactly does she know so definitely became more interesting but the beginning of half of this book was definitely slow and not the best the last and final book that i picked up for this month as well as magical readathon is gilded wolves which i gave four stars so this book is a reread for me and it basically follows a group of characters who come together due to various reasons and they decide to do a bunch of heists etc and things happen obviously there is a lot i feel like this book is a mix of i don't want to say six of crows because other than the heist and like 
the cast of characters element i don't think there's a lot of similarities but it does remind me of like indiana jones with all the puzzles that they have to go through there's what i really liked about this book is all the puzzles in different cultures so there were puzzles in chinese there were puzzles in egyptian there were puzzles in like various languages various cultures i just found that aspect to be super fascinating just because the author had to do so much research to learn about all these to start off with and the characters themselves were so smart that we had like a mathematician there we had a historian we had a guy who can like forge these beautiful things um and then we'll obviously have the main character we have another girl who can like touch things and like read things when she touches them we just have a very like diverse cast of characters which i really enjoyed as well i don't remember what i gave this book when i read it the first time around but i'm happy to say that i still enjoy this book um and i cannot wait to finish off the series sometime soon i just started the second book and i'm about like halfway through and i'm very intrigued to find out how this will end i don't think the second book is the great it is so far but i'm really hoping that things pick up and the third book will be freaking phenomenal so anyways those are all the books i read this past month this was a lot of books and like i said i read a lot of them for the readathon so i kind of like zip through a lot of these books as fast as possible just because i really didn't want to like reiterate myself over and over again um but let me know down below which books have you read for april how did your reading month go did you join the magical readathon i'm curious because i feel like a lot of my books came from that but as always if you like this video please give me a thumbs up it really does help on my channel and if you'd like to see more content of me please don't hesitate to subscribe down below as well as the notification bell and as always don't forget to follow me on twitter and instagram and i'll see you guys next time bye